Hello and welcome to my talk on uh, revised taxonomy of steganography embedding patterns. Um, this is joint work with 11 authors um, uh, from seven different institutions spread over four countries. So I'm um, happy to speak on behalf of them and present our uh, joint work here. Um, so let me first give you a brief introduction on hiding patterns. The idea is that uh, hiding patterns describe the key idea of um, hiding techniques of network covert channels originally um, in an abstract, non-detailed level, and um, they help up cleaning terminology and taxonomy. So um, we collect um, such patterns in uh, pattern catalogs, usually a hiding technique needs to occur some few times, three times usually, so that we can call it a pattern. And uh, we collect uh, the described hiding techniques in the form of patterns in pattern collections or pattern catalogs. I will use both terms in the same way. Pattern uh, languages are used to describe patterns in a unified manner. And for this purpose, we use Pell-Mell, which uh, is a very simple language that contains the following attributes here, at least in version 1.1. 1 .1. uh, version 1.1 1 .1 was used in our original 2014 or 2015 paper um, um, to describe hiding patterns. And we just continued using Pell-Mell. So each pattern has an identifier, can have an alias, a description of the problem, and so on. And um, so, however, we used only a subset. And every pattern can have an idea, an ID, a name, an alias, if there is some other naming available, um, illustration, context, solution, evidence, literature, and implementation tags. And, um, well, so the original idea was that we take all the hiding techniques that we can find back then limited to the domain of network steganography. And in the first paper, we analyzed 109 hiding techniques published since 1987. And we um, could describe the core ideas using only 11 patterns. Later, more and more hiding techniques were incorporated. And right now, we have approximately 20 hiding patterns. Um, the advantage of these hiding patterns are that um, they help up cleaning up the inconsistent terminology because there were scientific reinventions. So that means some people just published the same idea using different terminology. Um, and uh, also, if you teach in higher, uh, in higher education, um, how information can be hidden, um, then you just have to teach these 11 patterns and or 20 patterns and can illustrate them using the known hiding techniques as examples for these patterns. So because patterns can be derived from each other, they can form taxonomies. And this is um, a big advantage for us like this. So this was the first uh, patterns taxonomy, uh, hiding patterns taxonomy for network steganography or network covert channels. So as you can see, we have the classical different distinction between timing and storage channels. And we have four timing patterns. And we have um, uh, differentiated here the storage channels into those that modify payload and non-payload where the modification of payload is mostly digital media steganography and this out of scope in the original taxonomy. Um, and the non-payload, that means headers, er, all the metadata and padding fields uh, are differentiated in those methods that modify the structure of, um, for instance, a, um, a network packet or that uh, preserve the structure of a network packet. As you can see, there are also child patterns feasible because we can derive them. Um, in later versions, we extended the taxonomy. So this, what you see at the right side here is the latest version and top are the timing and below the storage channel patterns. And some additional layers were added like protocol agnostic and protocol aware distinction. And for user data, there's also distinction. Um, so 
This is state of the art 2021. Um, if you want to look into the original patterns taxonomy, visit our information hiding patterns website. You can click on every pattern and then get a description. Also, there are videos linked where um, we describe the whole concept in more detail. Um, what is a pattern and how uh, is every single pattern described? So in the videos, every pattern will be explained separately. However, the current taxonomy has some limitations and these limitations are especially the following. So first of all, we have a focus limited on network communications. So we neglect other domains of steganography like text or digital media steganography. And of course we want to include this. So this is a, one of the major contributions of the new work uh, because we want to address this problem. And the level of abstraction does not easily allow for inclusion of non-network patterns because um, for instance, in, in this um, um, taxonomy, we speak of payload. And um, so while digital media steganography would entirely end up here in the payload domain um, from the network steganography perspective, we also want to apply timing considerations for digital media steganography just to give an example why uh, this cannot be easily integrated. Um, another big uh, advantage and or another, and, um, uh, actually a limitation of the existing and advantage of the new taxonomy is that, that there is no distinction between the embedding and re representation of hidden information, uh, which renders the pattern taxonomy in its recent form a little bit ambiguous. And some patterns must actually be described as hybrid patterns because they are a combination of embedding and representation pattern. However, we kept lots of key concepts from the previous work. Um, several uh, aspects were um, functioning very well. We keep even many names and some uh, distinctions that we uh, had previously. However, the new taxonomy is more abstract so that it's that it fits all domains of steganography. Here's a short history of what happened. So the first paper defined hiding patterns, provided the taxonomy and uh, some methods and concepts, and then some uh, um, several improvements were made during the years, new patterns arose, new taxonomy levels for distinctions. Um, uh, in 2020, Hildebrand et al. proposed the first application of the taxonomy to cyberphysical systems steganography. And this year, a new pattern arose. And there's also, if we look at the methodology aspects, there are also some uh, advancements like describing how we can actually distinguish between uh, um, a contribution that is uh, just a new hiding techniques or even a real new pattern and how can we use patterns during peer review process, how can we make uh, hiding methods more replicable using the pattern based approach, how can we teach in academia and so on. Um, so um, what is our approach. So first of all, as mentioned, we distinguish between embedding and representation patterns. And the embedding patterns describe how secret information is in fact embedded into the cover object, such as a file, image file, audio file, or network packet. And the representation patterns describe how the secret information is then uh, represented in that object. And in fact, both can differ. Um, so while in many cases it's the same, for instance, if you just modify uh, the least significant bit of a protocol header field, then you um, apply and read uh, out the same information from the same location with the same methods. But uh, especially for indirect patterns, this can be different. Um, let's say here in this figure, the covert sender influences the service load on the intermediate node using um, a modulation of the traffic rate. So that's the rate throughput pattern that would be applied. But it can be uh, recognized. Uh, the load on the server can be recognized in different ways. So the receiver, covered receiver, can apply different patterns to this end. Secondly, we applied a more systematic naming convention. Therefore, we first of all changed pattern names in a way that they um, 
in many cases, the original concept of the network hiding patterns also for backwards compatibility was kept, but we need to rename them. So inter packet times modulation became inter uh, event element interval modulation. So we have the interval between some events that occur, for instance, and we modulate their, uh, these intervals. Message timing uh, is also too specific. So in the end, it's events and it's not their timing, but in, ge in very generic terms, it's occurrence. Um, we removed some uh, aspects like payload and protocol awareness. And um, we also removed the differentiation between syntax and semantics. Um, have a look at our paper um, uh, for um, a discussion on this. Uh, I will skip it for time reasons. Um, then there are um, uh, there's a definition of how pattern names must be um, uh, must look like. So they contain uh, identifier and a name, and the identifier follows some structured format where we the first letter tells us whether it's an embedding or representation pattern, and then the let, next letter tells us whether it's a temporal or non-temporal pattern. When then it has some number and optionally but only for the representation patterns so far, it has um, a domain indicator. If it's specific to network steganography, it would be a lowercase n for text stego and lowercase t and so on. So pattern identifier would look like this RT1T. Um, we then, uh, to describe the name, um, we add to the identifier and modifiable object for instance, an event or feature, the list of objects is here, and an action. So what do we do? We modulate or something occurs um, or there's some positioning. And as you can see in this table, when we exemplify um, the objects over different domains, so we have different um, uh, contexts here, then for instance, the interval object would be for network steganography the time between packets for text steganography the time between text notes and and for digital media it could be duration of an audio file while this is scaled down to the state or value of um, features that are par uh, specific to elements and that are specific to events um, so for instance a state or value could be a value in the header field number of packets, number of characters in text, and value of a pixel or number of pixels in an image. All right, so the major contribution here so far is the embedding taxonomy. The representation patterns are in this paper only um, exemplified for the network steganography domain and follow up work will extend this to more domains. However, let's look at the um, um, embedding patterns. So. We differentiated between temporal and non-temporal behavior here. So all hiding patterns, as you can see, are either embedding or representation patterns. Uh, we will look at the representation patterns in a couple of minutes. So first, however, let's look at uh, uh, temporal patterns. I won't cover the ZAP patterns that are in uh, light blue color here, uh, also for time reasons, but they are described in the paper. So the first pattern is the event element interval modulation. And there the covered message is embedded um, by modulating the gaps between succeeding elements or uh, events like network packets, where we can modulate the, the timing between packets that we send. But we can also apply this to um, so physical systems and other sticker domains. So in the paper, we provide usually three examples and um, they cover different sticker domains to exemplify this in a broader context. For the second timing pattern uh, um, or temporal pattern, the event occurrence pattern, we um, modulate um, the temporal behavior in a way that we encode hidden information in the temporal location of events. And that means that we do something at some specific time, for instance, sending a specific network packet at 6 p.m. or influencing the time where a drone starts or performing a disconnect at some point in time. Now let's look at the non-temporal patterns um, here on the right side. So first of all, there's artificial element loss modulation. Um, that just means that we embed the secret information by modulating some artificial loss of elements. For instance, we could artificially drop TCP segments to mimic 
a reliability feature and situation. And um, we could also remove commas and sentences. For the second pattern, elements features positioning, the covered message would be embedded by modulating the position of a predefined set of elements or uh, features in a sequence of elements or features. Sounds difficult, but actually the idea is pretty simple. So uh, look at this example below. Um, we could uh, modulate the order in which uh, this, these header lines appear. So first user agent or first accept language line, um, or we could place a specific character in some paragraph. The elements features enumeration pattern works in a way that the covered message is embedded by altering uh, the overall number of appearances of elements or features. So we, we count their number uh, in some sequence. Uh, so for instance, we could fragment a packet in either N or M packets. We could modulate the number of people wearing a t-shirt in a specific color in an image file. Or we could repeat an element or feature by duplicating some white spice character uh, in a text. For the state of value modulation, um, so this is based on the original value modulation pattern and uh, was the scope was broadened so that we also cover states like states of cyber-physical systems, um, for instance, actuator states. Here, the covered message is embedded by, well, modulating the state or the value of such a feature. And examples um, are that we could uh, modulate some physical states like proximity, visibility, height, acceleration, things like that, uh, to, en to embed the hidden information into this state. Um, works of course also with several header fields and network packets or with coordinates of uh, a player in a, in a 3D game. Uh, there are three sub patterns that can be found in the paper. And finally, the feature structure modulation pattern. So we alter the structure of the feature that we utilize for embedding. And that encodes hidden information. For instance, we could increase the size of network packets so that we have either size one or size two, so signal hidden symbol one or two. Um, we could also change the color or style of characters and text. Again, there are two sub patterns. Now let's have a brief look into the network steganography representation pattern. So how uh, would the information be this represented for the covered receiver. So what is it that the covered receiver needs to look at? And these patterns are derived from the um, embedding patterns. That's the that's key thing. So um, we do not reinvent the wheel here. Let's zoom in um, on the representation patterns. And as you can see here uh, in non-bold font, they are derived from the embedding patterns ET1 and so on. And this also works for the sub patterns. However, there are some specific patterns that are derived in the domain specific context. For instance, this RT2N pattern frame corruption comes from the original frame corruption pattern uh, that was already present. It's a special version of the event occurrence pattern. So there's some event, but it's a corrupted frame. And it's described multiple times in the literature. So it's a pattern for the network context. And this is why we add an N here in the end. Bold pattern uh, der derivations are derived from non-embedding, but the representation patterns. So we have two more at uh, artificial forced reconnections modulation. So we've the, the, the loss, the artificial loss here is a, is a, is a network connection and we force a reconnect and the same goes for artificial retransmissions also specific here for the network context conclusions and future work uh, we revise the existing uh, hiding patterns taxonomy and we addressed several of the limitations uh, these limitations are especially seen from the perspective of applying the patterns taxonomy to the whole steganography domain, which was never the intention of the original taxonomy. It's, it's very specific to network and steganography. So we made the taxonomy more generic. We can use it for also CPS steganography, text steganography, file systems steganography, and so on, and follow-up work will show this. Um, we addressed also other um, limitations like um, the fact that, that there was no distinction between embedding and representation process. 
um, we kept the good concepts um, of the existing taxonomy and incorporated them. So we did not reinvent the wheel and we tried to achieve as much backwards compatibility to the existing taxonomy as feasible because we do not want to break the, the, the understanding and the, the consistency of the literature if not necessary. And we have shown the first representation patterns for the domain of network steganography here. In future work, we want to show the representation patterns taxonomies for other stego domains like CPS or file system, digital media and text steganography. And we consider, but we are not sure right now whether it's, it, it will work, uh, extend the size of the consortium to integrate also the domain of digital watermarking. So if you're interested in uh, contributing, especially this aspect, then let me know and I will um, bring you in touch with the whole consortium so that we can discuss this. All right, there's a website where we explain again all the details and, uh, and I thank you very much for your kind attention and I'm happy to answer your questions now.